G'day, I'm Jib Smart, and this is 2016's Enter the Gungeon. Dodge Roll, the game's developer, has put a fair amount of work into making this game playable with a single Joy-Con using something they call Gyro Aim. You know that's what we like to see on this channel, so let's take a look at how it works, why it shouldn't actually be called Gyro Aim, and how it could be even better on Switch and PlayStation 4. Let's begin. This is the Switch version of Enter the Gungeon. While I'll normally have a 3D controller overlay on screen when playing PC games, it doesn't work when playing on consoles. When I play with a Switch Pro Controller or a pair of Joy-Cons, the left stick moves the character around while the right stick aims. There are pros and cons to aiming with a stick instead of a mouse in a game like this. Unlike first and third person shooters, stick aiming is very direct and deliberate in top down shooters like this one. Because you're directly controlling the direction of your aim, rather than moving a cursor, it's easy to respond to threats on all sides. However, Enter the Gungeon rewards precision, and for that, a tiny joystick is not up to the task. So, when playing with a controller, with a bunch of aim assist, guiding our aim closer to enemies the game thinks we're trying to shoot. Now, without a second joystick or a mouse, how do we play Enter the Gungeon with just one Joy-Con? One way is with button aim, where each button corresponds to a direction. Press the up button to shoot up, down to shoot down, and so on. You can press two adjacent buttons at the same time to shoot between those two directions, giving you eight directional shooting. Generous aim assist takes care of the rest. The other way, which is the focus of this video, is gyro aim. Using the motion sensors in the Joy-Con, the game considers the whole controller your second stick. Tilt it forward to aim up, to the right to aim to the right, and so on. Holding the controller flat is like having the stick in the neutral, untouched position, which the game detects by reading the gravity vector from the accelerometer. When this virtual stick is tilted, its direction is the angle between the controller's forward direction and the direction you're tilting it. Now, forwards, backwards, and sideways are easy. The angles in between those can be a little awkward. When I try to aim 45 degrees to the right, for example, you can see that I'm not doing a very good job keeping the controller facing exactly forward. So that could throw off my aim. Thankfully, the game gives you the option to show the cursor, so you can always see where you're actually aiming and adjust accordingly. Let's see it in action. Okay, to be honest, that's a lot shakier than I expected. I can keep it steady if I'm focused on doing so, but in the thick of the action, it can be all over the place. This does not look like gyro to me. The 3D overlays you see in my videos are all one-to-one -one with no smoothing applied. I know that it shouldn't be this shaky. So what's going on? The accelerometer gives us the gravity vector when the controller is held still. That tells us which way is up. But it also detects acceleration of the controller as we move it around, even subtle bumps and shakes as we press buttons. It appears to me that Enter the Gungeon is assuming the accelerometer's input is the gravity vector at all times. That signal might be smoothed a little bit, but they can't smooth it much without making it feel sloppy. They're not actually using the gyro at all. But with the gyro's help, we could overcome this problem. See, the accelerometer helps us figure out which way is up, which is crucial to figuring out if the controller is in the neutral position or how much it's being tilted. But when the controller is being moved around, which we can guess reasonably well by whether the accelerometer input is changing, among other things, we no longer rely on the accelerometer for our gravity vector. Instead, we use the angular velocity of the controller, as detected by the gyro, to keep track of the controller's rotation relative to the last known gravity vector. Over time, due to small inaccuracies accumulating, our calculated gravity vector will drift away from the actual gravity vector. But before then, the player will usually have held the controller still enough that we can correct our gravity vector using the accelerometer. Combining the accelerometer and gyro in this way is called sensor fusion. The gyro is great at handling moment-to-moment -moment movements, but has no way of detecting which way is up. The accelerometer is great at detecting which way is up when the controller is still, but isn't helpful when it's being moved around. So I'm pretty sure Enter the Gungeon's gyro aim is actually just accelerometer aim. We can verify this by shaking the controller side to side without rotating it. Accelerating it side to side makes the game think the controller is being tilted side to side. But a sensor fusion solution would not be fooled by this, as linear acceleration doesn't affect the gyro at all. Now, before it sounds like I'm being overly critical of Dodge Roll's work, I want to acknowledge that the solution they went with is creative, mostly effective, and a lot simpler to implement than sensor fusion. 
props to the developer for coming up with a simple solution for how to use a Joy-Con in a twin stick shooter. Game design and development involve solving a tremendous number of problems, and we try to rely on conventional wisdom when we can. But when navigating a space that hasn't already been well explored and conventions haven't been established, such as single Joy-Con controls, it's hard to find ideal solutions. Gyro aiming done well is easy to do when you know how, however, and there are free resources to help with that today. You can find some on GyroWiki, but those were only published this year, and Enter the Gungeon Switch version came out a few years ago. So let's sum up what we've got so far. In theory, Enter the Gungeon treats the whole Joy-Con as a joystick for aiming. Using sensor fusion, they could likely have made it much better. They went for a simpler solution instead, and simple is often good. This is a case where the more complex solution, sensor fusion, would have been much better in my estimation and my experience. But it's rarely easy to discern that without actually having done all the work to implement both solutions anyway, and you won't know if it was worthwhile until it's done. So I really don't blame Dodge Roll for going with the accelerometer only solution. Even if Enter the Gungeon had a great implementation of sensor fusion, it's still not an ideal stick. It has no pivot point anchoring it, nothing to prevent unintentional twists and turns of the controller, and it doesn't pull itself back to the neutral position like a thumbstick does. It's awkward to use, although it's hard to compare something you're new at to something you're much more practiced at, so take that with a grain of salt. In spite of all the shortcomings of using the Joy-Con as a virtual stick, both in theory and in this particular implementation, I've still enjoyed playing with it. With the help of some generous aim assist, I've been doing alright. But there's more to this video than just analysing how Enter the Gungeon uses a Joy-Con's motion sensors. Let's look at how Enter the Gungeon should have used the gyro to better the game on any platform with gyro in its controller, like Switch and PlayStation 4. Let's look at gyro as a mouse. Okay, we're on the PC version now, which means I can use Joyshock Mapper to convert controller input, including gyro, to keyboard and mouse input. You can see the 3D overlay on the left side of the screen showing exactly what I'm doing with the controller at any moment. Gyro as a mouse is actually super simple to implement well. The gyro can require some calibration, but that can be a simple matter of asking the player to put the controller down. That's what World of Goo does, as well as having the best sensor fusion I've seen in a Switch game. But for gyro as a mouse, I don't recommend using sensor fusion at all. While it makes up for the shortcomings of each sensor for some applications, it's still a compromise between conflicting inputs. And that compromise is unnecessary when using the gyro as a mouse. The game doesn't need to know the controller's absolute orientation any more than it needs to know where your mouse is on the mouse pad. Just use the local angular velocity given at this moment and treat it as a mouse velocity. It's just about that simple. There's a bit more going on here, smoothing, tightening and mouse acceleration. They are all configurable and done in such a way that controls are still snappy and predictable. They're very simple to implement and all covered on GyroWiki. I'll have a link in the description. Gyro as a mouse works great with a full-size controller too. If I'm playing with PlayStation's DualShock 4, I'd much rather play with gyro as a mouse than use the right stick. No aim assist required. The DualShock 4's gyro is just as capable as what's in the Switch's Joy-Cons and Pro Controller. It's a real shame developers have missed this opportunity on the PS4 for nearly a whole console generation. When playing with a single Joy-Con, there are some disadvantages that come with it being so small and light. It can be hard to keep the controller from moving while pressing buttons. The bumps and shakes are not as bad with gyro as a mouse as they are with the Switch version's accelerometer aiming, but without aim assist it's still noticeable. Also, I found that when playing with a single Joy-Con and gyro as a mouse, I was more comfortable playing at about half the sensitivity that I use when playing with the DualShock 4. As I mentioned in my Overwatch with one Joy-Con video, the smaller size of the Joy-Con amplifies small, unintentional rotations. I'd love to see developers explore this further. I'm slowly working on a video breaking down how to implement good gyro controls, but everything you need to know is already on GyroWiki. Do check it out. Elsewhere on this channel, I play a bunch of different games with controls like this using Joyshock Mapper. I'll have links in the description to the configurations I use to play Enter the Gungeon with a single Joy-Con and with the full-size controllers, as you see here. Let me know if you're having any trouble getting Joyshock Mapper working, or if you're a developer and want some help implementing gyro controls in your current project. The gyro turns the whole controller into a mouse. Whether it's 2D or 3D, if a game plays better with a mouse, it also plays better with a gyro. It's about time games played better with a controller than they have for the last two decades. Spread the word.
Watch this space for more, and let's change how games are played.